Once upon a time, a beautiful young lady and a very handsome young man fell in love and got married. They were a wonderful, compatible couple. And God blessed their marriage with a fine baby boy. They loved their little boy very much. They raised him, nurtured him, coddled him, and spoiled him. They raised him in the palm of the hand and gave him everything they thought he wanted. Finally, when he was about seven or eight, they let his feet touch the ground. Juan Tizal was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and suitably named after the saint San Juan. He studied and mastered every instrument in the orchestra, but finally settled down to specialize in the valve trombone. Tizal is a very big man, a very unselfish man, and one of the finest musicians I've ever known. What did you think of Duke's music when you first joined the band, the sound? I had a... Oh, well, uh, what, kind of, what kind of, I mean, I didn't know, because I couldn't tell Duke nothing about it. Just when we was at the Cotton Club, that's when I joined the band in the Cotton Club years ago. And when he was making those arrangements, and I used to hear the band, and naturally I couldn't say nothing, but I was wondering to myself, I wonder how he's going to get away with all that, you know. But he, I used to ask him, I'd say, well, one of these days I'm going to let the public like it anyhow, go for it. Because I couldn't figure how I could get away with that, you know. I mean, the chords, mm -hmm. it's not the band, it's just the chord he was writing on, you know. Because I know, he told me one time that, that if he sit down on the piano, just sit down on the piano. And that sound, if he likes it, he's going to write that, you know. So if, he was, if he was not a, according to the harmony or anything, you know. So there were no rules with Duke Ellington? No, with him was no rule. He write what he what he wanted. Well, when you finally got going with the band, I, I understand that uh, you had a lot of fun. There were a lot of very funny things that happened with the band. Could you tell me about some of those? You mean about the jokes and so yeah. forth? Oh, well, about the jokes, the jokes, I used to play jokes in different of the musicians. And one time, I think it was at the Howard Theater, no, the Howard, I think it was on the, oh, in New York, I, uh, I forgot the name of the theater. Anyhow, before the curtain went up, I bought some, I had some itching powder, you know. And before the curtain went up, I went to Duke and I said, Duke, what, about what time it is? Well, what time it is? I was rolling this itching powder. So the, the curtain went up. And whatever he was playing, he was playing two and doing this. He couldn't hardly play, you know. Every time he played two or three bars, he comments. But he realizes, I don't know who is that. So he, he gave me not much, because he never cussed me, because he knew my character, you know. I couldn't take that. But he knew he, oh, I was that. And I, I was the one that was doing that. Then another time, I bought one of those, I don't know how you call it, for the for the tape, I don't know what you call it. Plastic doo doo. <laughs> uh, thing up, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I put it next to the almost in the back of him by the piano. It was uh, it was plastic. Uh, a plastic thing, you know. A dog mess, you know. Okay. And when the curtain went up, I did something like that, and and he looked back and she said, like, hey, what do you what do you want? I said, look at it. So he looked at the thing, and even he may believe that it's something smell, and nothing smell because it was a plastic thing. So at the, he didn't say no more. He kept on playing, and at the end of the, at the end when he couldn't come down for the finish, he went to the station, uh, station manager, and told him about it. There was something, a cat or something did something there on the stage. And there come the manager with one of those big shovels. And did something like that when it didn't, you know, naturally, that thing flew away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a funny thing. I know the time about the itching powder, three of the dancers in New York. I put some itching powder in the, 
in the uh, in their pants inside the drawers, you know. <laughs> and they were dancing. They did all kind of dancing, you know, splitting and all that. <laughs> oh my Lord! And the fellow that I put that in father, he couldn't hardly dance. He was so mad, you know? <laughs> He didn't realize what it was. So they figure who it was. And the next day in the morning, you know, you have to come for an early show. The next morning, uh, they, they, they took my tuxedo shirt and put some itching powder all in my tuxedo shirt. They got back at you. Yeah, and when I went to put it, I put, they, they called 15 minutes on, you know. So I went to put it on, and when I put it on, I felt it in here, and I said, ah, oh, ah, oh, something wrong. They had fixed me up. But the man keep all in time, they said, all on. So I had to put it on. Each father or anything, I don't care what it was, I had to put it on. <laughs> I went on the stage with that, I was playing, I was doing rock and this thing here. <laughs> oh, I could hardly make it. And I saw the step brothers, that was the step brothers. I saw the step brothers there just laughing and laughing because they knew I, I couldn't make it. What did, what did Duke think of all this? Did he Oh, have... no, well, he took it as a, as a joke, you know. He had a good sense of humor. He, was, uh, he appreciated it. Oh, well, and he, he, he never got mad with me. And in fact, he never got mad with nobody. He cusses sometimes, you know, sometimes in rehearsals and things like that. But he, didn't, he don't mean nothing. 